Hello, hello everyone. It's finally time to present my final 0 0.60 uh, Captain Perks build for pretty much every ship in the game. I've had a couple weeks now to test a bunch of different builds out. Some of them I have posted commentaries on, so you already know what builds I have. Some of them I haven't had time yet, but there are commentaries on the way, which include a lot of ships. Now, I'll tr uh, you should have, let's see, how much time do you have? You still have 18 hours left before the special prize ends. So I recommend if you haven't spec'd your captains, you should do it quite soon after watching this vid, because otherwise you're going to run out of time of, on this special discount, after which, of course, it's going to go back to the original prize, which is, I think, 25 doubloons per captain point, which is quite a hefty prize. Anyway, moving on, uh, I think I'll split this into parts as usual, or oh, well, not split it into parts, but I'll start off with one uh, ship type first. I think I'll start off with DDs, I'll move on to cruisers, then I'll do battleships, and finally uh, carriers at the end. Now, my Shimakaze build, let's start off since I already have it selected. My Shimakaze build you should be aware of, I've switched to the 12km Torps. I'm not going to go too in-depth on this because, well, I've already made a commentary on it, so, and otherwise this thing will end up being stupidly long. So I'll just show you the captain perks, and then I will move on to the next one. Shimakaze build. Gearing build is almost identical, the only difference is instead of torpedo reload we have superintendent because of course Shimakaze relies heavily on the torpedoes, gearing relies heavily on the smokes. Uh, module wise I don't think anything has changed, everything is exactly identical. Moving on to the comma, you already know, this is another one I made a commentary on, I switched to the 4x3 build which I find extremely useful on the Komarovsk. Z-52 is by far my least played uh, DD in this entire patch because, well, I don't think it's very fun, I don't think it's very strong, I think it's quite frustrating to play, but this is ultimately the build I have been running on it. Uh, you might make some change, you might uh, try to fit in Adrenaline Rush if you like, uh, ultimately you kind of need AFT, you really need stealth, RPF is good for hunting them down. Your smoke are so garbage, you really need a superintendent. Honestly, the Z-52 really isn't that much fun as a ship in general, so I haven't really gone too in-depth, but this is a solid build that does work on it if you can be arsed playing this ship. If I don't sound very enthusiastic, that's because this ship isn't very much fun to play. Lo Yang. Uh, this is identical to the gearing build, no surprise there. It's pretty much... Uh, the builds you see are pretty universal, that they will work on most tiers throughout the game. So, uh, what works on the gearing will work quite great on the Loy and as well, since both like to fight enemy DDs, so it's very good at that. Let's see, what other DDs do we have? Benson, no surprise here, almost identical um, to what the gearing build is. I could actually, well, I can't be arse wasting points on it, but I would get Adrenaline Rush as the last one. Uh, right now I'm running Vigilance on it, but this is mostly for random battles and such, anything more competitive. Honestly, I still think instead of uh, Vigilance, I'd still take Survivability Expert. You don't need both, both RPF and Vigilance on the same. Actually, I'm gonna do this now, otherwise I'll just forget. There is no point running both RPF and Vigilance on the same thing, because, well, you're supposed to use the skills the whole idea of running RPF is that you don't need Vigilance because it points towards the closest targets, uh, aka where the torps will be coming from. Akisuki, uh, this one, let's see, is there anything special about the modules? Nope, rudder shift uh, as expected. This one is pretty much the same. I do run reduce, reduced dispersion, that's because I don't really run an AA build, so there's no point running the increased AA range. Because, it, well, yeah, it's already 6km because you run AFT. It's kind of pointless to run it. I guess it's kind of up to you which one you like. I prefer the aiming mod mostly for the, the torpedo turrets. I mean... Mm, I guess. I guess ultimately, for the sake of uh, getting the AA range, it's probably better off. From a minimax point of view, it's probably better off running the AA range. Akisuki build though, uh, preventive maintenance first perk, last stand, uh, demolition expert, 
and then we run concealment expert advanced firing training and inertia fuse now i have to mention i've actually gotten better average damages when i don't run inertia fuse because of the sheer he spam capability and fire starting capability that you have without running it uh, if you run it without this and you just have Demolition Expert, you have a really good fire chance, which means, of course, on this ship you can start a ridiculous amount of fires, and from stealth especially, which means you get a really high average damage. However, when it comes to fighting other DDs, uh, Inertia Fuse is absolutely ridiculous. Inertia Fuse plus HE spam against other DDs in the Akizuki absolutely melts other DDs. You can even fight like gearings and stuff and you will melt them. The damage is absolutely obscene. So in my final build I did opt to go for IFHE simply because the DD damage is insane and of course this makes this ship very very good at fighting other DDs which is kind of something you need because of course this ship is incredibly slow and sluggish at 33 knots and a horrible turning circle. Um, you kind of need to melt the other DDs because they can easily hunt you down especially since you don't, don't have RPF either in this build. So in the, in the final build I did go for IFHE here. Bliska, pretty solid overall build, uh, basic firing training, demolition expert, of course, AFT, stealth, and adrenaline brush. This all combined means, of course, this guy is an obscene HE spammer. You don't really need IFHE because you kind of want to keep this really high fire chance, which is 10%. Uh, you want to keep that plus the incredible reload you get from all of these things combined. Um, just a great fire starter. Wasting getting IFHE, I feel, would nerf it, and you'd have to give up too much to get it. So, did not take it on the Bliska Leningrad, almost identical uh, as my Bliska build, except uh, instead of going for Adrenaline Rush, I do get uh, Expert Marksman because the turret traverse is so painfully slow. There are of course some variations where you don't get expert marksman and you instead get adrenaline rush but then instead of getting this one you get a main battery mod. I have been experimenting with some of these builds. It's possible that for ranked I might perhaps switch this around because you, do, you don't really know how just powerful adrenaline rush might end up being in ranked. But the potential is there so keep that in mind. You might If you really really love adrenaline rush then giving it up. Uh, giving up the turret traverse and switching to this one might be worth it. Keep in mind, of course, you give up some main battery uh, loading speed if you do do this change. Anyways, what other DDs do we have? Unshun. Let's see, what captain build am I using? Pretty much the identical one. Of course, the Unshun, I'm not using fire chance. I'd rather use superintendent. That's because, of course, the Unshun has really good concealment. At 6.3 with... Uh, uh, concealment expert it means that this guy can actually compete with stealth dds which means you can ca contest capture points really effectively which is of course a good reason to run superintendent since you can push in the caps bully out the enemy dd and then when they leave the cap and everyone starts focusing you you can smoke up and get the cap so the additional uh, smoke is very important on ships that can actually utilize stealth let's see any other dds worth mentioning not really on Kamikaze R and such, I would I will just use of course my Shimakaze build, which uh, as I said earlier, this Shimakaze build works really well on all IGN DDs because it benefits all the things that you need. I'd probably take RPF as the last perk on this ship. Anyway, um, moving on, let's move on to cruisers. My Zao build. Now the Zao build is of course priority priority target is I love it on cruisers, extremely useful. Uh, turret Traverse, Expert Marksman, especially if you for IGN DDs, I mean IGN cruisers, especially when you get to stuff like the Mayoko, you're gonna love having this one. Um, Superintendent, Fire Chance, Vigilance and Stealth. Follow up with Adrenaline Rush and then when you can afford it, Direction Center for additional AA and DD cover. Now, ultimately, you don't really, you're not really an AA cruiser, you're not a radar cruiser, so things like RPF and AFT are less useful for you in Japanese cruisers, and especially the Zao. This ship is all about sustain, staying alive, starting fires, which is of course the Zao's absolute strength, and of course not being torqued to shit if you do push in at some point. And if you do go low, having adrenaline rush boost all your reloads is fantastic. Overall, I've really enjoyed this build, 
and this build should probably work on pretty much all IGN cruisers because it the Zao is pretty much the ultimate Japanese cruiser and anything that works great on it should work on pretty much all of them just not as effectively which is probably something you should expect. Uh, this is also the build I use on the Tago, or the captain I use on the Tago, and this build works just fantastic on the Tago as well, since they benefit from the same things. Uh, the Moin, this is one of the few cruisers where I actually do use RPF. Uh, this one and the, I think, Minotaur? I don't even know if I use the Minotaur. Of course, it synergizes great with the short range, long duration radar, but otherwise, I've given up stuff like Third Traverse, not needed. Okay, I need to speed this up since this is getting really long once again. Uh, next cruiser is Moskva. On this one, of course, I use my st pretty standard Moskva build that I've played a lot with in this patch and I really enjoyed it. Uh, AFT to get that long panic range on your uh, defensive AA. Stealth, uh, Vigilance, Adrenaline Rush once again. On this one, you need turret reverse because it's so slow. Hindenburg, I've already shot. This is one of the builds I made a commentary on. Uh, and I really enjoy this. This is, of course, big sustain, big damage, big DPM, running reload mod and stuff. You do a lot of damage and you survive a long time. Very similar to the Zao build. And the Minotaur. Oh yeah, I've actually given up radio location on the Minotaur. I used to run it, but ultimately I did not find it worth it because uh, I'd rather have more sustain. Now, you might give up Vigilance, but I felt like if you give up Vigilance, then you're too too reliant on your Hydro, and you have to play too safe when Hydro is on cooldown, and plus, of course, Vigilance plus Hydro gives you massive torpedo reaction time, so I kind of enjoyed it. Uh, I run manual AA instead of AFT, that's of course, you don't have defensive AA, so there's no point increasing the range that much, whereas manual AA means your 7.2 km guns shoot down shit tons of planes, which is very effective. Was that all my Titan cruisers? I think so. I already mentioned that I used this build on the the Zao build on the Tago. Kotosu Captain already made a commentary on it with IFHE. Also the Captain I use on the Chapayev. Note that the Hindenburg Captain also the one I use on the Prince Eugen. Uh, uh, Belfast already made a commentary on this once again. IFHE build in incredibly strong. Uh, Atlanta. I've already made a commentary on this, another IFHE build, once again, these caliber guns benefit greatly from it, great damage, this is also with slight variations, as I mentioned, the captain I use in the flint, if you want more details on this, just go watch my commentaries on the ship, since I go a lot more in depth, the, I don't want this commentary to be stupidly long, so I kind of go through this fairly quickly, let's see, do I have a spec'd out ARP captain somewhere? Uh, Arp Nashigara. Ashigara is actually my 16 point captain in that case, it seems. Uh, well, for Mayoko, of course, pretty much the Zao build is what I'd go for. Priority target, we need to traverse because it's horrible on something like a Mayoko. This is super intended, it's more important for higher tiers when we get the heal, which is tier 9. So I'd probably go Demolition Expert. But then again, I think this is what more important to, under, to have, have this captain on the Arp Takao and an or, on the Arp Takao we'd actually want superintendent so concealment expert I'd probably go superintendent just so I can use this captain on the Arp Takao if I for some strange reason, reason want to play the Arp Takao and yeah this is going to end up being very similar to my Zao captain isn't it because why not the benefits from very much the same things and then I'd get of course, Adrenaline Rush and the Direction Center. So, no point going any more in-depth there. Uh, what else do we have? Budioni, uh, very similar to all these captains. Of course, like lower tier Russian cruisers, they benefit, when you have this caliber, they benefit from uh, the same type of builds than, of course, that the Belfast and such do, of course, which is IFHE is incredibly potent here. But I mentioned that a hundred times already, if you haven't been paying attention, 150 to 155 millimeter guns gain a great bonus from IFHE. Yeah, no point going any deeper into this line. Let's move on to battleships. Yamato battleship build, already mentioned it, already made a commentary on it, I think. Yes, I have. Uh, of course, this is our main AA help plus AFT, and it's all about sustain, stealth, 
and uh, getting the most out of Adrenaline Rush, which will greatly benefit the ship. Uh, I like this build so much that it's the build I also ended up using on the Montana, identical builds. The only one that has a different build is of course the Godosa Corforce, where I go with the full tank build, which uh, you kind of give up AA and you give up AFT in general because, well, this ship, it doesn't really matter how much you buff, if you put how many points you put into um, AA, if, so, if a carrier decides to target you and you don't have help, you're fucked anyway. So rather just go for the full sustain and this build I ended up being surprisingly strong thanks to fire prevention. Um, actually using the huge size of the Grosse Kurfust against the enemy, surprisingly. So I really enjoyed this tank build on this ship. Missouri, I think this is identical to my Montana build. Not surprisingly, of course. Uh, this combination just works fantastic. This is probably something similar I use on the North Carolina. To be fair, if I went for a pure North Carolina uh, captain, I would probably get manual AA, simply because of, because of course the North Carolina has an obscene amount of damage on... Uh, well, it's got an obscene amount of AA on everything, to be fair, but manual AA added on on top of these things makes this an obscene AA beast. But you don't really need it, but it's an option. I like this build up. Bismarck, uh, unlike the Grosse Kurfurst, I don't go full tank on this one, of course, because the A secondaries work so fantastic on this ship. So uh, the basic basics are similar, preventive, expert marksman, adrenaline rush. But here we get superintendent, and then we go basic fire training, better AA and better secondaries. And then we go AFT, better AA, better secondaries, and of course manual secondaries. You still end up with a fair amount of AA here, so you're not by any means anywhere near helpless against carriers, but your primary is of course the secondaries, and you gain some benefits from the main guns. There is a patch coming at some point which will make adrenaline rush work on secondaries as well. As you say, it says all types of armament, but it doesn't include secondaries yet, but that is to be included later on. And when it does, of course, secondary Bismarck will become significantly stronger. One, one will have to see if it becomes strong enough to actually go for secondaries on the Kurfurs as well. So far, I haven't found it worth it at tier 10 because people like to keep their distance. Uh, Turpitz Scharnhorst Captain, I have already made a commentary on this one. Of course, I use my Berserker build. It's the same build that you could use on Geneisa now and such, because it works so great on this one. The Berserk build, which is of course sur all about survival, doing damage, manual AA, because it really works with these big caliber guns you have on German battleships. Let's see, any other battleship that I have that I might have missed? Warspite. I have a 13 point captain here. Preventive maintenance, of course, you want to survive. Uh, you don't want to lose turrets, you end up against high tiers a lot. Turret traverse, because the turret traverse is, of course, horrible on the war spot. Uh, actually, it's not that bad, jeez. Oh, no, no, yes, it is. 56.3, it is horrible. I do remember, remember correctly. Superintendent, vigilance, concealment expert. I don't even know what else I would go. The AA is of course a joke on this ship, so there's no point even investing in it. I'd probably just go for more survivability somehow. Uh, possibly get Adrenaline Rush, possibly even get something like Basics of Survivability. Actually, Basics of Survivability is pretty pointless because Warspite already has a really quick uh, repair reload. So you might maybe want to use that even further by going for high alert or just going straight up for fire prevention. But I don't play the war spot that much anymore because of course tier 6 is the cursed tier that no one wants to play because matchmaking hates you. Right, uh, lower tier Japanese battleships like Ishi Sushi, I'll just use my Yamato commander, Nikolai, is there anything worth discussing on the Nikolai? I haven't specced it. You do end up losing your turrets fairly often on this one, so we'd go preventive maintenance. You don't even have planes on this, do you? Nope, no planes. What was the turret traverse? It was pretty horrid, wasn't it? Yes, so we need expert marksman. It has no AA, so no point going for that. Um, stealth. I really want vigilance, actually. Let's give myself one more point. Yeah, I want Vigilance on this captain. I would get Adrenaline Rush as the next point here, simply because I can only imagine how broken this 
captain will be with a much faster reload on these main guns so the Nikolai will probably be quite hilarious anyway that was uh, the bat oh Dunkirk what am I running on the Dunkirk sorry about that I am actually running a 19 point captain because I leveled it up using elite commander XP uh, direction center to get an additional fighter sounds about right expert marksman sounds about right I do run high alert because this thing burns like cinder it feels like so you actually get a reload of 68 seconds under repair superintendent vigilance concealment expert manual AA of course because most of your AA is on these big guns even though your AA is pretty garbage to begin with that sounds that sounds about accurate I mean, uh, you might want to try to work in Adrenaline Rush instead of High Alert, but if I remember correctly, this ship, yeah, this ship burns like mad, so you actually kind of want this more than this. And the problem is, of course, the guns are fairly weak, so one can question just how much benefit you get from Adre Adrenaline Rush on this ship. Anyway, there might be some changes available, you change this for that. Uh, I'm not too bothered, I don't play the Dunker too much, it's not really one of my favorite ships, as I might have mentioned a couple of times. Moving on, of course, what do we have left? We have the carriers left. Right. Akuru, I go for, well of course the order priority is naturally aircraft, uh, torpedo acceleration, torpedo armament, air supremacy, followed up by dogfighting expert. And here, after this, that's kind of optional. This one is questionable, evasive maneuvers. Uh, if you have a really good micro, you can kind of make it work since you can proc this ability just by pressing return to ship. So it allows for some micro, but I usually can't be arsed with it and I don't like the slower speed regardless, so I don't take it at all. Um, I do get AFT. Now, once again, you could get manual AA as well. I like AFT because it increases the AA range. 6 on this and 4.2 but manual AA makes these guns insanely strong which also works fantastically either one is honest either one of these is great you can get both as well and skip stealth but I've actually gone for a very stealthy Hakuri build you get your detectability to 11.5 and I've been experimenting with some really offensive positioning on the Hakuri uh, to see if I could get really close to the enemy action and uh, see if I can survive basically but overall stealth is of course also a viable option always since it makes it harder for the enemy to locate you uh, I think I run exactly the same on the midway yep identical build on the midway of course on the midway it's not really worth getting manual AA at all because you have so much of your damage on these smaller caliber guns so you get a higher benefit from AFT. Stealth is pretty much must have on the midway though because otherwise the default concealment is so garbage but with concealment expert you get a really good concealment on this ship. I of course use the midway captain on my Saipan as well so that ship will work just fantastic on that one. Right, is there any ships I might have forgotten? Sims, I use Gearing Captain. Indianapolis, I use Des Moines Captain. Uh, any ships I might have skipped? Nope, it looks I've pretty much covered all the ships. Like, if you're wondering about some ship on the way up to one of these tier 10s, it's pretty much I'm using... It's pretty much, you can expect it to be a variation of the tier 10 captain. The only exception would be like the Moskva captain where you benefit, where all the guns before this are low, smaller caliber ones. So you benefit more from IFHE captains. But other than that, I would say I have covered them all. I have covered them all. I mean, low tier captains. Do I even have a Congo captain that has some points worth using? Not really, not really, no. And I mean, of course, lower tier, it's not like there's much to discuss at lower tier captains because you ultimately you still want to go for the basic things, which is if you have a fighter plane on a battleship, you go direction center. If you don't, uh, it's most likely going to be preventive maintenance. That's the best pick. Turret traverse is needed on pretty much most lower tier battleships because turret traverse is so horrid. And superintendent that gives you an additional heal is amazing. And of course, one of the greatest weaknesses, which is the detectability, getting it down is another priority. So there's like your first 10 points. That's a very safe option. And then you can go into AA, which is one of your greatest weaknesses, or you can spec into torpedo protection, another one of your greatest weaknesses, and so forth. Uh, or if you find yourself vulnerable to fire, like I did in Gross Corfos, you can go for that kind of fire build. There, there are options, but 
you can't really do too much wrong if you just go go about it logically. Anyway, uh, and of course, 203 millimeter guns gain very very small benefits from IFHE. So I don't recommend going for IFHE if you're on any ship that has 200 millimeter guns or larger, because the benefits are going to be so terribly small, and more than likely it will lower your average damage because you lose so much fire chance. Um, anyway, I think I've pretty much covered all my ships. I'm just going to upload this one since you guys still have a good 18 hours left to respec your captains. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll talk to you guys later and I'll be of course having some commentaries coming up on the ships that I haven't really made full commentaries on yet.